Hey everybody, it's Alex Ritzer, a professional dog trainer, here to talk with you a little bit about what you should be doing if your puppy growls when you go to pick them up. First off, we want to consider why our puppy might be growling. Dogs usually growl to express that they're uncomfortable, in pain, they're scared, something like that, and they want the situation to be fixed. So you touch your dog and they're in pain, they might growl at you to say, hey, that hurts, please don't do that. They might also growl if they have a really good chew toy and you walk over to pick them up because they don't want you to take their chew toy. So growling is simply a method of communication from our dogs, right? Hello, sir. So we want our dogs to be able to communicate with us. So first off, we never ever want to punish the growling. If you punish your dog for growling, you yell at them, hit them, anything like that, you're going to end up with the dog that goes, I tried really hard to tell you that was not a comfortable situation for me, whether it was pain or fear, or whatever the case was, and you didn't listen. And I still have that pain, fear, whatever else is going on. So I'm going to try the next way I know how to get your attention, which is usually biting. And I would much prefer, I'm sure as most of you would as well, that if your dog was uncomfortable with something that they growled at you and you could say, okay, cool, we'll fix that situation. Instead of having your dog growl at you, pushing your dog and then ending up physically injured because your dog bit you. So... Growling's a gift is popular saying with you know dog trainers that work with aggression. We love growling. We want dogs to tell us about their feelings so we can fix those feelings versus a dog that just straight up bites without warning because those dogs can end up really dangerous to work with because they don't tell you how uncomfortable they're feeling. If your puppy has always growled when you pick them up, um, it might be a good idea to make sure that we're not having anything medical going on. And this is also the case if your puppy is, you know, hasn't been growling and is suddenly growling. We want to rule out any kind of injury that is aggravated when we pick the puppy up. Puppies might also be growling when you pick them up because they're uncomfortable being physically held. So it's not necessarily, you know, a painful experience, but more of a scary one for them. Um, an uncomfortable experience to just be kind of picked up and suddenly a lot you know higher off the ground it's also the case that your puppy might be growling because they're worried about what you're doing when you pick them up are you picking them up and going to go put them in the bath are you picking them up and going to go put them in the kennel and things like that that they're not a fan of so you, they could be growling because they associate being picked up with some not so fun things happening so we want to kind of figure out maybe what reason our dog is growling because that lets us find a solution right if we could treat medical problems um, if it's a case of your puppies growling because they're uncomfortable being picked up then we can teach our dogs to actually learn how to be picked up on cue so this is something that I highly recommend, especially if you have a small dog. So a dog that's going to stay small enough to be picked up so that you can give them a warning of, hey, I'm going to pick you up right now. And it's not a surprise thing that happens to them. It's basically a trained trick that they're familiar with. So I'll kind of show you what that might look like. You want to come here? I need a puppy. I need a helper. Yes. So uh, it would start by, you know, standing alongside your dog. You'd have your treats handy and you would give your cue. So it might be up, boost, whatever it is. So I might say boost and then pick up my puppy. Feed a treat. This is great. And then I just put them back down. So we practice just doing short little sessions. Boost. and then back down. Boost. Good. And back. Short little sessions like that. Giving the cue, picking up your puppy, feeding a treat, putting them down. This is also something I would recommend doing if your puppy has been growling because of you're picking them up and putting them places they don't want to be. We want puppies to associate being picked up with great things happening, right? He's so good. He's so good. So we don't want them to 
think that every time they get picked up, something not so fun is going to happen. A lot of times the same situation happens with dogs and having their collars grabbed. We grab our dog's collar because they're in trouble. We're going to go put them somewhere, put them in their kennel, move them. So I work with my dogs on fun collar grabs. So wind. When they're puppies, I will work with them. Just grab their collar, feed treats. Grab their collar, feed treats. So I can grab from whatever angle. And you can see he's not concerned about the fact that I'm going to grab his collar. Same thing applies to puppies that are going to be picked up and instead of having their collar grabbed to move them places. Hand sanitizer is not for you. Not for puppies. Not for puppies. So preparing your dog by giving that cue. Um, if it's a dog you know you're comfortable with having jump in your arms, you can even teach a cue for them to jump up. So like Hobbs knows that where if I go, come on, jump up, then he'll jump up and I can catch him. And that's really a great way too, if you have a dog that can physically do that. If it's a smaller dog, you could consider having them jump on a platform and then jump to catch them. Because then the dog's choosing to jump, right? They're not just having this thing happen to them. They're going, oh, heck yeah, I'm gonna jump into your arms. I love that, get that trick. So kind of changing the mindset of our dogs about why they're being picked up is a great thing. Train it as a trick, not as just, you know, something I do because you're in trouble. Instead, if your puppy is in trouble or something like that, you know, we wanna just guide our puppies to a new situation, go, oh, hey, can we go have this instead? Over here, hey, I tossed a treat over there. I tossed a treat in your kennel. I didn't, you know, pick you up and put you in your kennel. So think about ways where you can get your puppy to make that choice to go in the kennel, make that choice to go in the bath whenever possible so that you have less situations where you're picking up your puppy and doing something with them that they don't necessarily want to be done. When we're having puppies that don't want to be picked up, they're growling regularly, it is always a good idea to seek help from a professional trainer that can work specifically with their situation as well. We're often able to pick up on things that you maybe might not be able to see because we've had a lot of experience with a lot of different situations. And several training organizations, um, Care Prior Academy graduates, IAABC, International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, um, dog behavior consultants through them. There's the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers, CCPDT, and you can find great trainers or behaviorists through their website. So I'd highly recommend looking for a professional if this is a regular problem you're struggling with, especially if we've ruled out medical reasons for why a puppy's uncomfortable with being picked up. And that way we can get ahead of the problem before it gets worse. Especially when we're seeing growling in a young puppy, we want to make sure that we fix that before they grow up to be any older with that habit. So definitely always, you know, consider seeking that professional help specific for your situation um, to have a plan specific for you and your dog that'll work in your, in your situation too. In general, like I said, we want to make sure that we aren't punishing our dogs for growling. So if we pick our dog up, they start growling. I'm going to put the dog down. I don't want to keep doing the thing that's making them growl because that could lead to a dog that then starts to try and bite because growling's not working, right? Growling's the equivalent of me going, hey, no, I'm uncomfortable with that. Please stay back. And if you continue to approach me when I've said, hey, please stop, I might punch you, <laughs> right? We can all imagine that situation where you've put up that boundary of stop there. Nope. Don't want to do that. And someone continues and then you escalate your behavior as well. Same thing with dogs. Growling's that warning going, hey, don't, don't do that. Don't like that. And in that moment is not the time to fix the growling by punishing or anything like that. Instead, put the puppy down, consider what situation just happened? Were there any patterns that you can start to form about why your puppy is growling? And how are you gonna handle that in the future? If you picked your puppy up and you're taking them away from a toy and that's maybe why they were growling, well, in the future, then maybe I'm going to toss a treat for my puppy so they leave their toy, and then I'm gonna pick them up when the toy is no longer in the picture so we don't have conflict about the toy. So definitely consider that as well. Finally, also consider long-term, is it gonna matter if you can pick your dog up, right? Um, 
I can easily pick up Hobbs. He's about 35 pounds. He can jump up. I can hold him. Windy is usually anywhere from 55 to 60 pounds. He's a big boy. Right? Big boy. I don't necessarily want to catch 60 pounds of dog, even just 50, on this, you know, when we're not have our winter extra weight on. Um, I don't want to catch that as much as I'm comfortable catching 30 some pounds. So consider, is it something that your dog really needs long term? You know, if that's the only problem you're having is growling when they're picked up and they're going to be a big dog and you're not going to be picking up on a regular basis, consider, okay, so maybe I'm picking up my puppy to move him, but in the future, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to practice teaching my puppy to touch my hand and asking them to touch my hand as a way to move them. Right? Need to touch. Also oh, nice. Touch. Nice boy. So I use that regularly with my dogs. You know, if I go to get into bed and Wendy has my spot, um, instead of trying to shove him over or anything like that, I can just be like, touch. And have him move far enough that he has to touch my hand over there. And then I get my spot. And it's already pre-warmed. Wait for Papa Snuggles. So consider, you know, teaching a hand target. If your puppy is going to end up having to be walked on a leash eventually because they're going to be big then we don't need to worry about necessarily training your puppy it's okay to be carried everywhere because pretty soon your puppy's going to be walking everywhere anyway so we might as well work on that training so that's something to keep in mind too uh, if it is a small dog there's a lot of times where we're going to want to pick up a small dog and that's something that's going to happen a lot in their life so then that's a situation where i'd be more inclined to fix the picking up problem itself um because it's going to be a you know long-term thing that we want to be able to do with the dog. So consider that as well as you know adult goals. Is it a puppy that's going to be this size that you're not going to want to carry everywhere, or is it a puppy that's going to be small and easy to carry? And that's probably something you're going to want to do a lot with the puppy. We want to work on it more with the smaller dog in that case. For more tips and tricks, you can check us out at HoundGames.com, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks. Hops. Good boy.